Please come home. Ask your how he would I pray? Cause I know I, I can die any day. Teach your how would just show me the way? The way. Trying to walk down the path that you lay. So you're wiser than Solomon. The scripture just says, be more ready to hear. Every time you come up here, you're more ready to talk, my brother. Brother, you're talking right now. Stop talking right now. But they consider not that they do evil. That's what you're not considering, brother. The words that could be coming out of your mouth could be an example of you doing evil. That's the why I get that has led so many of our people astray. Because she looks just like your pastor. They speak not according to this word, but it's because there is no light in them. Who out here has no light in them? The ones who are not speaking according to this word. One doesn't have a Bible in their hand. Okay, the word went throughout the world, not you. At the end of the day, we're out here because we love our people. Okay, but love doesn't always feel like hugs and kisses. Sometimes love feels like somebody yanking your shirt to pull you out from the way of coming traffic. You will never go wrong following your house. You will never go wrong modeling your life, your ministry, your speech after your shot. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Now, I don't even have to break that down and make that plain. The judge himself, that, that's literally like the judge coming up to you like, hey, this is what, this how you're going to be judged. This is how you're going to be condemned. Okay, is it the word that's offending that brother or is it your personality? You've let your personality overtake the word of the Most High God. Watch your mouth. Watch your spirit. Okay, we're not out here to please men. I know a lot of times a brother can end up developing another brother's personality because he's trying to please that brother. And your your desire to please another man is making you go off. The elect of God are going to have bowels of mercy. And what else, brother? Bowels of mercy. Kindness. How many people even use those words? Okay, if you wouldn't say some of that stuff you say or do some of that stuff you do with your Hawashai right next to your shoulder, then don't do it when you think he's not. Because we're approaching Pentecost right now. If these words prick your heart, all praises to the Most High God, this is what it did to those 3,000 men on the day of Pentecost. As the sun goes down, Pentecost is happening. And it said that that day, 3,000 people were baptized when they heard this word. This is what baptizes us. And even on the day of Pentecost, 2,000 years ago, it said that when the people heard this word, they were baptized. So most high willing to if just have a change of mind, you would be baptized. So many people were baptized by the word, but they also broke bread and had fellowship with each other. So most high willing, if y'all stick around, we'll bring some a few things that we brought out, and then we can go ahead and eat and drink with brothers. And if anybody got any questions, we can go over those as well. Most high willing. Ask you how would he would I pray? Cause I know I can die any day. Teach you how would you show me the way? The way trying to walk down the path that you lay. This is the book of First John, chapter three and verse four. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. What is sin, my brother? For sin is the transgression of the law. No sin is us having wicked thoughts. For sin is the transgression of the law. I hope that's being made plain, that the way that we sin is by transgressing the laws of the Most High God. So when we're trying to keep ourselves away from sin, we're trying to keep ourselves away from breaking the laws of the Most High God. Now my brother's been up here giving you a lot of good wisdom. Is there anything that you remember that the brother said? What can you take away from what the brother wanted to give you? What's your name, brother? Are you a believer of God? Well, that's a mighty thing, brother. Uh, I do want to grab that. Let me get in, please ask these 12 and 13 for the brother. I bring this out because this one scripture, it encapsulates everything that we're looking, that we're being asked to do. Okay, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, made this statement 
in terms of this being the conclusion of the whole matter. So meaning that if you wanted to wrap everything up in one scripture, this is what we're going to get for you, my brother. He's Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, brother. Book Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the counsel of the wise. Let us hear the counsel of the wise. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh. Fear who, brother? Fear Yahweh. Fear God, brother. That's the first thing. You have to fear God. And, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You hear that, my brother? Our entire duty as being a man is to fear the Most High God and to keep his commandments. Think about it. Well, I, I can rest a little more. I say, fear God like you pretty good. So you're wiser than Solomon. No, you're not. Let me get Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Yep, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to what, brother? And be more ready to hear. You see what this brother's been up here doing the entire time? Brother, you're talking. This brother is up here being quiet and listening. The scripture just said, be more ready to hear. Every time you come up here, you're more ready to talk, my brother. Brother, you're talking right now. Stop talking right now. Finish the verse, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Then to give the sacrifice of fools, but they consider not that they do evil. That's what you're not considering, brother. The words that could be coming out of your mouth could be an example of you doing evil. It's always wiser to be quiet than it is to speak because you're being judged by those words. Brother, I'm here to teach. I'm your teacher. Matthew 12, 36, brother, and 37. And brother, can you get for me the book of John chapter 12 and 44? We really love your humble spirit, brother. That's a very important thing to have in these last days. The fact that you can hear and listen means that you can learn. And that's very important in these last days. Matthew 12, 36, bro. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Say that one more time for our brother here. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. On the 37, bro. Verse 37. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You are right, brother. We are both speaking. But all of our words are being monitored by the Most High God. And by the words you speak, you're going to be justified or condemned. So that first scripture in Ecclesiastes 5 and 1 told you to keep your foot because you need to be careful with your tongue, brother. Don't let anything come out of your mouth. So us brothers up here bringing out thus said the Most High God. That's why we're up here teaching and speaking. If you're not teaching and speaking from the Most High God, then your words could be condemning you right now. So be careful with what you say. Let me get John 12 and 44, bro. Look at John, chapter 12 and verse 44. Yahweh shall cry and say, He that believeth on me, believe it not on me. Hold up, brother. Because some people breeze by that and not understand. This brother just looked at me crazy when I said we're out here to teach. But we didn't come out here in our own name. We came out here in the name of him who sent us. Let me get the book of John chapter 5 and verse 30. I'm going to tell you the reason why you should listen to me and I should not listen to you. Finish that verse Amen. out, my brother. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me. But on him that sent me. On who, bro? On him that sent me. On who, bro? On him that sent me. John 5 and 30, my brother. Uh, the book of John chapter 5 and verse 30. No. I can of mine own self do nothing. No, I'm here for myself. I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear I judge. As I hear I what? As I hear I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will. Hold up, brother. I seek not what? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. That's why we're speaking, brother. That's why we're speaking and not listening. Somebody let me get Isaiah 8 and 20 and 1 Peter 4 and 11. It are those who speak the words of the Most High God who should be speakers. I hope you're able to listen to this, brother, because we actually love you. 
There's nothing you can do that's gonna make brother stop loving you. Brother. Drop that. Somebody get Titus 3 and 10. I'm not gonna let you choke out the word, my brother. Somebody, Mark, you got Mark 4 and 12. I might kiss the ground. Have no respect for the men of the Lord that's up here giving you, thus said the Lord. That's that's the main point. Absolutely. This is what we're about to do though now, brother, because we tried to give you the love about three to four times right now, and you continue to reject it. So here's what we were instructed to do. Book of Titus. Chapter 3, verse 10, a man that is adhering after the first and second omission. Um, um, Admonition means after the first and the second time that we try to teach you, that we try to impart the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on you. Listen, brother. That's why I just explained it to you. An admonition is your brother's trying to teach you. We're trying to warn you. We're trying to exhort you. Brother, I thought you said you listen more than you talk. No, I do not because the word is talking. We're literally discussing a verse and you're discussing something else. Finish the verse out for him. Book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is a heretic. A man that is a heretic, meaning a man that's crazy and won't listen. I'm going to just be honest with you. That's what a heretic is. What do we do with that? After the first and second. Omniscient. That means after the first and second try. You said you don't know what admonition means? Just look at it simple. The first and second try. Then what? Reject. Do what, bro? Reject. So did you hear that scripture? After the first and second time that we've tried to help you, brother, and you continue to be a heretic, we were instructed to reject you. So what we're going to do now is focus on other people who actually have the ear to hear. Good day, sir. Yep. Let's bring that last part out. This was more for you, brother. I want you to understand what happens the minute the word starts coming out. This is the book of Mark, chapter 4, and verse 15. And these are they by the wayside. That's you, brother. This scripture is talking about those who are out in the streets by the wayside that are hearing the Most High's words. Then what? For the word is sown. And it made it plain. The word is being sown right here. You're here, brother. We're here for you. But what happens? But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. Who comes immediately, brother? And Satan cometh immediately. Who is this, brother? Satan cometh Who is this, brother? Satan cometh immediately. To do what, brother? And take it away, the word that was sown in their hearts. We're trying to impart the love on you, brother. And we have somebody that may be trying to take that word away from you. So it's very important that you don't allow him to do that. Brother, as I mentioned, I don't know if you know this, but at sundown is the day of Pentecost. So we're not only going to be trying to compel our people to come back to the law, statutes, and the most of the Most High God, but at around 8 o'clock, we're going to be giving out food, snacks, and drinks. If you want to, brother, you can sit down, and we'll definitely continue to teach you, and we'll break bread with you later on tonight. Is that something that you'd be good for? All right, brother, if you can, just have a seat. Hey, can I shake your hand, brother? I really appreciate your spirit, brother, and you coming out here to listen. That's my... Somebody let me get the book of, let's go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Okay, again, we're the watchmen for Israel, Dallas. We come out here every Shabbat to help compel the 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that you are the true biblical children of Israel. And with that comes a requirement, a requirement that we have to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. This Bible is much more to us than a religion. It's our heritage. These laws, statutes, and commandments are our culture. So you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans need to listen to these words. Mark 4 and 17, brother. Oh, Mark 4 and 17. Come on, I'm so oh, you're right. Matthew okay. 4 and 17. God said he's Book of Matthew, chapter 5, I mean, chapter 4, and verse 17. Read out. From that time, Yahushua began to preach and to say, repent. Yahushua said what, brother? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Con. Now that can't be made any more plain. And that's exactly what your brothers come out here to do today. We're out here to compel the 12 tribes of Israel. As I mentioned again, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that you need to repent. 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, okay that's a very important message that we need to have. Brother, brother, we really need you to move along. We're not up here, we're not up here discussing that point right now. We're up here to teach, brother. Can you please let the spirit of God dawn on you so we can do that? We have a job to do. Okay, brother, your job is not up to come here and sit in my face. You can just go back and sit down like everybody else if you want to continue to listen. I will, brother, but you do have to sit. Thank you, brother. Now, as I mentioned, or should I say as the scripture mentioned, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, his whole message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's the brothers out here message to our people. That now is the time to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Can somebody let me get the book of Acts chapter 3 and 19? Okay, we bring out some of the same scriptures every Shabbat. Because there's simplification in the message of Jesus Christ. It's not a difficult message to get. Okay, it's not, I don't have to go through 100 precepts in order to help you understand what we're here to do. Jesus Christ came on this earth in his ministry. The first part of his ministry was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So let's get a little bit more into repentance and what that means and how we do it. Acts 3 and 19, brother. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Now, repent ye therefore and be converted. And be what, brother? And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Okay, con. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Brother, you remember we just told you that sin was transgression of the law, right? So we all have sin, right? Because what man out here has not transgressed God's law? has not transgressed God's law. Nobody's hand should be up because nobody can say that they're without sin. So what does it say again, brother? Acts 3 and 19, one more time. Can you grab Matthew 18 and one, my brother? Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. What happens to our sins if we repent and be converted, brother? That your sins may be blotted out. That's, that's what happens to your sins, brother. If you repent and be converted, your sins will be blotted out. Finish that out. But the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Yahweh Hamashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive unto the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Con, now that's being made plain. Yahweh first came on the scene and said, what we need to do is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we just found out that to repent means to convert. Convert means to change. The most high God, Jesus Christ, is looking for us to have a change. What do you think that change takes place, brother? I'm pointing to it. In your mind, brother, the most high is looking, the brother brought that out in Romans 12 and 2, that we have to have a renewing of our mind. So when Yahweh shot, Jesus Christ was telling us that repentance is at hand and that repenting is the way that we get our sins blotted out to be converted. He's telling us that we have to change. But I'm going to go a little deeper into how we convert. Matthew 18 and 1, brother. Look at Matthew chapter 18 and verse 1. At the same time came the disciples up unto Yahweh shot, saying, who is, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Do you want to go to the kingdom of heaven, brother? I'm pretty sure we all do. So somebody came right up to Jesus and asked him, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So he's asking him, who is the greatest amount of people? Which people are going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Listen to Jesus Christ's response to him. And Yahweh called a little child unto him. He called who, brother? A little child unto him. And set him in the midst of them. And said, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted. There go that word again. Because we're trying to tie this together for you, brother, and I hope you're able to get it. Because we just brought out that Jesus' message when he came on the scene was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We went to Acts 3 and 19, and it said, repent ye therefore and be converted. Remember that word? Convert. I told you it means to have a change of mind. Jesus is going to break down converting even more. Start from that line where it goes into convert again, brother. Verse 3, and say, Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as a little children. Now that's so important because that wraps it up way more beautifully than I can. Jesus Christ is telling you that when you convert, you become as a little child. What is a little child able to do? They're able to learn. They're able to humble themselves. They don't have a full glass of water in their head to where you can't pour new water into them. 
So unless you can, I'll let the scripture finish it out. Continue that, brother. Uh, ye shall slot and become as little children. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. These are not my words, my brother. As I mentioned, we don't come out here of our own will. We come out here of the will of him who sent us. Right. He is telling you that if you want to be converted, if you want to make that change, then you're going to become like a little child. Continue that out, brother. Uh, whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself. That's important, my brother. That's what you have. I can see it all over your spirit, and it's a beautiful thing. Whosoever can humble themselves. That's another characteristic of a child. A child can be humble. A child's not walking around like they know everything. Ch children have their eyes wide open looking to learn. They're listening more than they're talking. This is the characteristics of a child who Jesus is telling you is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Is to be humble. So continue that, brother. Humble himself as this little child. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's that answer. The disciples asked him plainly, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he responded, these children are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever can humble themselves as that little child is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So we just broke down everything it means to repent. When you repent, you convert. When you convert, you change your mind. What is Jesus looking you to change your mind like? Like a little child. Become a little child. We brought this up the last Shabbat. Have you ever heard of being born again? When you're baptized, you're born again. I know my brother went into that, right? He told you that it was much more than being dipped in water, right? If I tell you that being born again means that it's meant for your mind to become that as a little child, doesn't that make sense? Because when you're born again, you're becoming what? A babe, right? A baby. Okay, so that's way deeper than being dipped in the water. Being born again is having a renewal of your mind. Meaning that a grown man, a 40 year old man, takes out everything that he's learned in his 40 years and he becomes born again. He starts over. All of that stuff that he thought he knew, he gets rid of it. And now he becomes like a little child because he's been born again. That's what it means to be baptized. And most high willing, that's what we hope to do to everybody who is within sound of this voice, who is within sound of the words of the most high God. Can a brother let me get the book of Acts chapter two and we're gonna start at verse one. As we mentioned, when sundown comes, that's the day of Pentecost. So we're actually out here not only to teach our people, we're out here to celebrate with our people. As I mentioned, if you stick around, we'll have a little bit of food that we can give out because we love to break bread with some of our people. So most high willing, matter of fact, let me get that in Matthew 4 and 4. Most high willing, if you are hearing these words, you not only stick around so you can break bread with your brothers, on a physical level, meaning we're actually going to feed the people, but as well, you get filled up on the spiritual bread. Matthew 4 and 4, my brother. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 4. No. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by oh, Salah. Man shall not live by what, my brother? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now that's being made plain. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So most high willing, if you stick around, we're also going to feed you in your belly, but most high willing, you're also able to get some of this spiritual food. Let me get what you was holding, brother. Look at Acts, chapter two, verse one. Bring it out. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, Con, I don't know if you guys are reading this account, but this is opening up what happened with the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Okay, the day of Pentecost was a very mighty day for the prophets. A lot of people got baptized on the day of Pentecost. But how is it that a person gets baptized? Somebody let me jump down to Acts 2 and 37, brother. Look at Acts, chapter 2, verse 37. Yeah. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. Now see, that's what it we're gonna get into being baptized. But essentially all the people that were around, okay, when they heard the words, that's what was pricking their heart. Pricking their heart means that it convicts your heart. It means that as you heard the words, it did something to you. Okay, and that's what us brothers are looking to do when we baptize our people. We're looking to prick your heart. Brothers, this is what it means to be baptized. I know many of us have been in a church and we've been dipped in water. And when we came out of the water, we were the same person we were when we got dipped in the water. Because as the brother told you, we are meant to 
be baptized under Yahweh Shah. Ephesians 5 and 26 says that it's the washing of the water by the word that baptizes you. So if most high willing, we can baptize everybody who's able to have their heart pricked by this word. Continue that in 37, brother. And said unto Peter, and said the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, uh, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, hold on, so I, I want to give you guys this very important word because somebody asked him. Okay, P Peter had just got finished giving them the word and somebody asked him, okay, what is it that we should do? He's going to make it plain. Go into it, brother. Uh, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized for every one of you in the name of your house shall must y'all. Now how important is that? Us brothers just mentioned that our message to come out here is Yahawashai's message, which is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We just found out everything that we got to do when it comes to repent, we got to convert, which means to become like what, brother? What did you say? Become like a who? Like a little child, my brother. So we know exactly what it means to be repentant. It means to convert and become as a little child. Peter's about to bring up convert again. Start from that again, my brother. I mean, repent. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, for the remission of sins. Repent and be baptized. So as I mentioned, we're able to baptize you, brother, by this word. And this is a very important thing because except you can be baptized, there is no way you're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So these baptisms are important. But us brothers aren't here to baptize you with water. We're here to baptize you with this word. Finish it out. And you shall receive, and she, and you shall, and, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, be testify and exhort, saying, "Save yourselves from this unto work generation." Now, this is a very important part. It said, "With many other words, he exhorted the people." Telling them to save themselves from this untoward generation. Okay, we know what toward means, right? Toward means to go forward. But he said that this is an untoward generation. So what is he trying to say about us? We're going backwards. Save yourself from this backwards generation. This generation that hates the words of the Most High God. Okay, that's why music is playing. That's why people are saying everything except for hearkening to the words of the Most High God. Because people hate the words of the Most High God. This is being prophesied in the last days to be the case. Peter says, save yourself from this backwards generation. Don't be like them. While they're in folly, enjoying their music, enjoying their fun, enjoying their wickedness, you be somebody who can hearken to the words of the Most High God. Right. Save yourself from this backwards generation. And when the people heard this, guess what, brother? Continue. Uh, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Hold up, brother. Hold up. When they gladly received that word, what happened? His word were baptized. In the same day, Salah, in the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Con. So in that same day, in that same moment, 3,000 souls were added to them. I hope that's being made plain about how you get baptized. Okay, being baptized is letting this water of the word run over you. It's supposed to prick your heart. You remove yourself from this untoward generation, this backwards generation that could care less about the words of the Most High God. Okay, every time we go to church, we go there so we can hear the desires of our heart. And your preacher, your pastor is more than willing to tell that to you because you're paying him for it. Can I ask you a question, brother? Can you read anywhere in the Bible where Jesus or his disciples were asking for money? Can you read in the Bible where they were teaching people in a mega church and then driving off in their Bentley? So why is there millions upon millions, maybe even billions of people going to go to church on Sunday? Thinking that they're getting baptized. But all they're going there to do is hear the desires of their heart. Can somebody let me get Titus 1 and 10? We're gonna, we just told you what a real baptism looks like. I hope you were able to understand it. I know my brothers here are. My brothers are strong and deep in the word and that's the mighty thing to have you brothers come out here every Shabbat. Most high bless you brothers. But when you're baptized, it's because you let this word wash over your heart and wash over your spirit. Peter made that plain. That when they gladly receive this word, and that's another part, you have to receive this word with gladness. 
And when they gladly received this word, they were baptized. But this is what's going on in church. And this is why our people are in such a dire estate. Titus 1 and 10, brother. Book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 10. Bring it out. But there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the unsocked, especially they of the circumcision. So this is saying that there's going to be many unruly and vain talkers, especially they of the circumcision. So that means it's going to be people like us. When it says they're unruly and vain talkers, it means all they're going to do is sit up in that church and go back and forth like, God got a message for me. Ah, God told me he's going to give you this. Ah, God said he's going to bless you with that. Ah, what is that doing for people? Okay, it's just somebody giving you the desires of your heart. And that's why those buildings are filled with billions of people. Because so many of our people are being deceived by these ruly and vain talkers, unruly and vain talkers. Continue that out, my brother. Whose mouths must be stopped. Their mouths must be what? Must be stopped. But people get mad at us when we tell these pastors they gotta be quiet. These are the words of the Most High God. Okay, he said that their mouths must be stopped because they do what, brother? Who's the first? Whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. See? Because they subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. How many of our parents, how many of our grandparents taught us to be lost because they were taught to be lost? Every time I try to tell my mom or anybody that I know about not eating pork and keeping the commandments, they give me some message that their pastor gave them. Almost exactly what our brother here was doing. No, brother, Paul said that you can eat this. Are we going to listen to the words of Paul or are we going to listen to the words of the Most High God? And that's not saying that Paul said eat pork. But I'm just saying even if that was true, even if Paul explicitly said, give me a BLT sandwich, I would still look at that like I'm going to keep the laws of the Most High God. Because he did not say not eating that BLT sandwich was going to condemn me. But I can find it here where eating that could condemn me. So I'd be under a deception to put Paul over every other apostle, Jesus Christ, and the Most High God himself. So people will come up here, that's what my brother said to this brother. Can you teach me about how I can eat anything except for using the letters of Paul? Somebody bring 2 Peter 3 and 16. That's what your Christian church has become. A bunch of people who go in there and misunderstand Paul's letters to their own destruction. And they don't destroy just themselves, but as we read in Titus 1 and 10, they destroy entire households. Come on, bring that out one more time before we get to that. Book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 10. But there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which are not, teaching things which they are not. Now, I bring this out a lot, brother. If you're in error, you may deceive yourself. And that's bad enough. But how much so that brother that deceives thousands upon thousands of other people? Not everybody should be teachers. Because we know that those who are teachers are going to receive the greater condemnation. That's actually what I was trying to tell you, my brother. It's a scary thing to be a teacher. I wasn't telling you that because I hate you, my brother. I love you. But if we call ourselves teachers, we're going to be held accountable not only for us, but everybody we taught. So if you teach somebody that they should eat pork and you are wrong, you're not only damning your soul, but you're damning the soul of everybody who you've taught that. So it's a very important thing that not everybody considers themselves as teachers. Okay, because you're not only damning yourself, but you're damning everybody who's listening to you. And that's why Titus 1 says they subvert entire families, teaching things they ought not. Let me go to 2 Peter 3 and 16. We're going to get something about Paul, brother. Peter is considered the rock of the church. Okay, Peter was the leader of the disciples. He was the top disciple, the top apostle. And this is what he told you about Paul's letter. Start from 15, brother. Look at 2 Peter. Hold up, lock it. Let's put some of these cars up. It's loud enough. 2 Peter 3 and 15, my brother. Keep listening to this one. And this is for you, brother, as I mentioned. I'm glad you sat down, brother. I appreciate you. I really do. Because these words are for everybody. This is why we don't need to go into Paul's letters and teach things that we don't understand. Bring that out, brother. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. Read it out. An account that the long suffering of our Lord. How y'all doing, brother and sister? Y'all okay? Y'all have a minute for the word? Most high bless you. Continue that out, brother. Of our Lord is salvation 
even as our beloved brother Paul. Here we go with Paul. Listen to this one, brother. I know you said you haven't heard a lot of scriptures, but listen to this. Peter, who is the leader of the church, is about to tell you something about Paul's letters. Listen to what he said. He did. He met, but he and Jesus, the cornerstone, made Peter the rock of the church. So listen what the rock of the church said about Paul's letter. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written it unto you. Verse 16, as also in all his apostles. He's saying also as in all his epistles. So all of Paul's letters, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Romans, all of Paul's letters, what is Peter trying to tell us about him, brother? Speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. He said Paul's letters are hard to be understood. Paul's letters are difficult to be understood. So why is it that every single teacher comes up trying to teach you the gospel of Paul? When we've been warned that Paul's letters are difficult to understand. So that means that that's the meat of the word. Okay, my brother brought out that we should desire the sincere milk of the word. So Paul's letters are what we consider difficult to be understood. That's the meat of the word. But most people will come up to you trying to teach you the gospel of Paul. See what happens if you do that. Let's see what happens if you end up teaching and misunderstanding Paul's letter. Which they that are unlearned in unstable rest. Who rest in Paul's letters, brother? In unstable rest. As they that do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Unto what, brother? Unto their own destruction. Now see, there's no other prophet that you've been told that about. That misunderstanding Paul's letters could end up leading to your own destruction. Okay, so brother, when you say that we should be able to eat pork, I can guarantee you one thing. Paul was not teaching against the commandments of the Most High God. I don't know who wrote Acts 10 and 10, so I not say Paul. Go to Acts 10 and 28. No, 10 15, you gotta, but, but the whole chapter explains what Acts 10 and 15 is about. We can't just stop at Acts 10 and 15 and make, a, and make an entire new doctrine from that. We have to go down and continue to see what he's talking about. Let's see if that vision was about pork. Or if it was about something else. Acts 10 and 28. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Yeah. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company and come unto one of another nation. But God has shown me that I, sh that I should not call any man. Hold up. I should not call any what? Any man. Any man no, any food. Any man. No pig. Any man common or unclean that vision was about paul not calling any man right. common or unclean right. so when you read acts 10 and 15 he gives you the context of what he's speaking on right. that vision where he was saying no unclean thing has touched my mouth he was thinking that it was about food but he told you later that he understood that when god sent him that vision it was that he should call no man common or unclean that's what Acts 10 and 15 is going into. So that's, that's the understanding behind it. But that's only 13 verses from 15. So if you had Acts 10 and 15 and you go down 13 verses after that, you'll see that that vision was not talking about pork. Because pork ain't food anyway. So obviously this was not talking about eating unclean foods. But Acts 10 and 28 wraps it up. When he says, I was shown that that vision had nothing to do with eating unclean food, God showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That's right. So that was the context of what was being considered clean or unclean. Not he was pork. talking about men. Jesus. It has nothing to do about pork. So again, Paul would never teach you to not keep the commandments of the Most High God. Right. So Paul it's likely, brother. I mean, the, the authors of a lot of the books are up for debate, but either way, we know that the word was inspired by the Most High God. Somebody let me get 2 Timothy 3 and 16 to prove that. So at the end of the day, we know that God inspired these words. It's the Most High who wants you to hear these words. That's why we don't need to get stuck on people. Okay, because every prophet, every true apostle, they didn't come to give you their words. They came to give you the words of them who sent him. So at the end of the day, it's all by way of the Most High God and his son, Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 3 and 16, brother. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by who, brother? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Huh. So that's who's writing the book. 
We don't necessarily have to know the Arthur brother because we know that all scripture was breathed out by the mouth of the Most High God. It was inspired by him. So regardless of the author is, we understand that that's true. But I hope we was able to clear that up for you. Because let me tell you something. If you can humble yourself, my brother, and repent for that fact that you thought that we could eat pork, you can be forgiven for that sin. That's what us brothers come out here to do, is to let you know that we need to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So if you hear something and it hits your heart, and you can say to yourself like a child would, you know what, I was wrong, I didn't know that. But I know now, and I'm going to change. That's a mighty thing, my brother. That's a very mighty thing. So most high willing, that's something that you're able to do. Okay, Paul was not teaching us that we should eat pork. Okay, we're going to get into a little bit more exhortation. Somebody let me get the book of Galatians, chapter 1 and verse 10. Another brother, uh, can we open up Sirach 19 and 24? Matter of fact, drop that. Let me get 1 Peter 4 and 11, Isaiah 8 and 20, and we're going to go to 2 Peter 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. We don't get it. <laughs> now, you'll notice someone is out here speaking to you and they're coming out of their own belly. Okay, somebody's out here and they're not using the words of the Most High God, and that's the deception. That's the wide gate that has led so many of our people astray. Because she looks just like your pastor. She's going to sit over there on a megaphone and talk out of her own heart. Just so brothers can ignore the word that's coming out. So let's hear something about that. Let me get what you got, brother. Verse Peter, chapter 4, and verse 11. Read it out. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. No, let him speak what I want to say on the street with holding up my sign. As the oracles of God. If any man minister... Let him do it as the ability of which God given, that God in all things may be glorified through your house, shall bless you up, to whom we praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Con, all praises, brother. I hope you are able to hear this because there's two messages going out right in front of you. You have the brothers up here who are coming straight out of the word, and you have a woman over here who's coming straight out of her own belly. Okay? And I hope, most high willing, you repent. Because you're literally disobeying this commandment, Isaiah 8 and 20, brother. Bring it up. Let's hear something about the word of the Most High God, who's speaking it, and who's and who's deceiving the people. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Bring it up. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word. If they speak not according to what, brother? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Who out here has no light in them? The ones who are not speaking according to this word. Right. And those right. aren't my words. So you have a brother that just brought you out the scripture to let you know that. But you'll have people that will ignore me and listen to her because she's going to tell you a bunch of things you want to hear. Read that scripture one more time, my brother. Look at Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Read to the Lord and to the testimony that they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. There's two people preaching to you. One has no light in them and one does. One doesn't have a Bible in their hand. Where are you getting that information from? This is why people stop believing in God. Okay, the word went throughout the world, not you. That wouldn't make any sense. God said that everybody would hear his word. Everybody ain't going to hear what this woman thinks. But everybody has access to this word. The word is what was supposed to go out in the world. The word is what's supposed to go out in the earth. So if they're not speaking according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Second Peter 1 and 20, brother. Woo. Book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 13. He wicked with his eyes. He speaking with his feet. He teaching with his fingers. Fraudness is in his heart. He divides it, mischief continually. He saw a discord. Con, bring that up, brother, in Second Peter 1 and 20. At the end of the day, we're out here because we love our people. Okay, but love doesn't always feel like hugs and kisses. Sometimes love feels like somebody yanking your shirt to pull you out from the way of coming traffic. Sometimes that's love as well. Okay, we're not out here to tell you about all of the hugs and the kisses and the Bentleys and the cars and the women and how everything's going to be okay. We're out here to give you, thus says the Most High God. Okay, 2 Peter 1 and 20, my brother. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. Knowing this verse that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. 
hold up. No prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. That's another reason why it's important to read, thus said the Most High God. Because there is no private interpretation. How many of your pastors do that to you? Well, brother, that's just the way you understand that. If a brother can't break down what he's saying by going to the scripture, that means God did chose him. God's not using him. This said that of the word, there is no private interpretation. So what it says is what it says. That's what that means. So you don't need somebody to come out here on a microphone with no Bible in their hand and just scream at you, thus said the Most High God. They're teaching you from a point of Satan. We just read that if they don't teach according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. I hope you guys are able to read and understand the difference because it's taking place in front of us right now. You have two different types of word going out, and I hope you all won't be deceived. Okay, somebody let me get, uh, we're going to go back. We're going to drop that. Let's get back to what we're going to do. I want to go to Galatians 1 and 10. And brother, can you grab Sirach 19 and 24? Again, Galatians 1 and 10. Again, we're out here to baptize our people. As I mentioned, sundown starts Pentecost. And we just broke it out and made it plain that to be baptized is to let these words come over your heart. If you've ever been baptized by being dipped in water, that's fine. John the Baptist baptized you for him that would come after him. John the Baptist put you in that water to get you ready for the word being made flesh. Well, guess what? The word is here. The word is here. So what we look to do is baptize our people. If you've been baptized by being dipped in that water, now is your time to be baptized by the word. And this is what really baptizes you. So most I will, and anybody who is within earshot of this word, is able to listen and hearken, you feel it in your heart, and you do what Jesus Christ's entire message was, which is repent. We broke down what repent is, but if anybody got any questions, we can definitely break it down again, because we're here for y'all. But we're gonna get this in Galatians. Matter of fact, let me get Sirach 19 and 24 first, because this is an important message. As I mentioned, we're out here for our brothers and our sisters, the 12 tribes of Israel, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we need you to hearken unto these words. Okay, and this is even going out to people who know that they're Israel. You're never too late to get baptized. We don't know so much that we can't be baptized. So this is also going out to all of my brothers as well. I appreciate y'all coming and stopping. If you have any questions, please let me know. You got a question? Come, let me get your question. Hold on, let's get it on first. Hold, hold that. My question is, I saw this right here. This is the devil. Jesus is a Negro, not a white man. My question is, what does it matter what color Jesus is? Woo! Somebody let me get John 8 and 32. Good question. Good question. Right. Does the truth matter? Right. You kind of know where I'm going with this then, right? John 8 and 32, brother. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Jesus Christ speak. Can you find me a scripture in the Bible that says it don't matter? I wonder why this is the only scripture people try to say, what does this matter? Because if that's the case, we could do that with every scripture. Like what other scripture should we say, why does that matter? It's like we're letting the world teach our minds. I'm going to give you the account about Jesus Christ explaining to John what he looked like on the island of Patmos. Okay, when you open up the book of Revelations chapter 1, Jesus told him what you see right down in a book. And then he gave the appearance of Jesus. How are we going to say that that doesn't matter? Jesus Christ literally told him what you see, write it down in a book. So Jesus thinks it matters. Read that account, brother John 8 and 32. We're going to get to the list. Let's just come out. Look at John chapter 8 and verse 32. And he shall know the truth. We shall know what, brother? And he shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now see, for our people, these so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, hearing this truth, makes us free. Okay, we're coming from a people who've had this image put in front of us as an oppression. Okay, they did this under oppression. We were being brutalized in slavery. We were being forced to worship this image. So Jesus Christ said that ye shall know the truth and the truth is gonna make you free. So for somebody who doesn't understand that this thing has kept a people oppressed, but especially mentally, I hope you're able to understand that if you really have love for people, you have empathy, then you will be able to understand how this image has made people like me captive in the mind. But what we found out is that the truth of Jesus 
is going to set us free. That's why that's so important. Let me get what you got, brother. And this is a picture of Caesar Barjay, a picture of a real man. Kill his brother and raped his sister. Yeah, and we know that Christ did not sin, right? So that's important. Okay, this scripture is given by a man. This is a depiction of an actual man. So us brothers aren't coming out here to be hateful. I know that's the first thing that it could be seen as. Oh, you brothers got this image saying that it's a fake Jesus, and then you got the black. Okay, is that hate, or is that trying to give our people the truth? Somebody let me get rev up. I'm gonna get, huh? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What I'm gonna say is that, I understand what you're saying, but said that he comes to bring division. Now, I listen to you, but I hope you give me the same courtesy because I, I heard you out. But what you just said is not biblical. Let's hear what comes out of the voice of the okay. Most High God. Let's hear it. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 8. Read it out. With the Most High, divide to the nation. Hold on, brother. Are you hearing this? Do you see how somebody doesn't... Yeah, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 32, 8. 32, 8. All right, so obviously we just had somebody come up to us who isn't looking to learn. They're just looking to speak, and that's what most people do. But I'll give you his point. His, his point is because he can't argue that we're trying to speak the truth. So he turns that into where well, you brothers are teaching division. You brothers are teaching, uh, teaching separation. Let's see if that's what I'm teaching. Or if that's what the Most High God is teaching. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations. Now when the Most High put all the nations together. Divided to the nations their inheritance. When he separated. When he brought together. When he separated the sons of Adam. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Tons. As I mentioned in the book of John chapter 5 and verse 30, we come out here not of our own will, but to do the will of him who sent us. Okay, and this word just said that the most high in his wisdom separated the nations, that he divided the nations. 
So we have somebody coming up who is telling us that we must be preaching hate because everybody should just be together, right? I tried to bring up to him the Tower of Babel, okay? When the Most High seen that they were trying to become one people of one language, he separated them again and confounded their languages. That's why we're a separate people speaking different languages to this day. It's the Most High God who wanted there to be separation of the people in accordance with his wisdom. And we can prove that, Isaiah 49 and 6, because the main reason why brothers come out here to tell you who the children of Israel are and who they are not is because of things like this. Isaiah 49 and 6, brother. The book of Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6. Yeah. And he said, it is a like thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Hold up. We should be his servant to raise up the tribes of who? To raise up the tribes of Jacob. No, to raise up the tribes of everybody. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. To restore the preserve of everybody, right? To restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Okay, Khan. I hope that's being made plain. The Most High in his wisdom elected a people. It is what it is. Okay? The, the ocean doesn't add, the, the lake isn't jealous of the ocean. The moon isn't jealous of the sun. The Most High in his wisdom created division and separation. And he did the same thing in people. Instead of trying to get into the word and change the word, how about you get into the word and let it change you? That's, right. That's what we need to do in these last days. Because everybody wants to tell God how to do his job. The Most High God in his wisdom decided that there should be separation. Okay, so any more than the day can be the night, everybody can't be the chosen people of the Most High God. That would make Isaiah 49 and 6 of no effect. The children of Israel are meant to raise up the tribes of Israel and to be a light to the nations. So that means all the other nations should get their relationship from the Most High God by watching his people. The best thing that you can ask to do is that you are able to get on board with the Most High's will. Cleave to the house of Jacob. We can get that, Isaiah 14 and 1, if somebody ain't holding that. This is why we come out to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Not only because we were instructed to in Isaiah 49 and 6, but because we're fulfilling prophecy. Okay, the Most High has elected a people, and this is what they're elected to do, Isaiah 14 and 1. Look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob. Hold up, brother. I know we're not talking about Jacob again, and this is a big deception. Because I was in church for 20, 30 plus years. You know I'd never heard the name Israel. As crazy as that is to believe, I'd never heard the name Israel. That's what you know how much your pastors can deceive you. Because I had one of the pastors that walked up and down, yes, nah, and didn't teach me a word, didn't teach me a thing. I never knew about the word Israel until I ran into a brother in the Watchmen for Israel. Matter of fact, David brings that up. He says, the Watchmen, I seen on the street and they smoked me. That's why I ended up joining these brothers. Right now, I'm in the Watchmen for Israel. Make sure you come back, brother. We'll feed you. Absolutely. That's why I'm in the Watchmen for Israel. Because I came across the real word, and it pricked my heart, just like we read in the book of Acts chapter 2. At that moment, I was baptized. I've been dipped in water before. You know what? We're in Texas right now. I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I lived in the hood. And when I was a kid, they used to have this uh, red and white bus. I'll never forget it. It came from a church called Longview Baptist Church. And they always used to drive around in the hood and pick up hood kids. And they would take us from Shreveport, Louisiana to Longview, Texas. And everybody that got baptized would get like a whole lunch bag full of candy. Guess how many times I got baptized? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth though, and as many others that was like me. I've been, I've been dipped in water over 120 times because they was giving out candy. I never got out of that water and was a new person, not one single time. Being, back, being dumped in that water is not what changes you. The brother brought out in Romans 12 and 2 that it's a renewing of your mind. Okay, so we're out here to give you that true baptism today. If you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you can be baptized today by the washing of the water of the word. That's what his brothers are here to do for you. What would I have you at, brother? Tom, let's continue that. How you doing, brother? Y'all have any questions about anything? Hey, most high bless you, brother. But Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. Read it out. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob 
and will yet choose Israel. Now that's not me saying that. Oh, the Most High will yet choose Israel and then do what, brother? And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Hold up. Because the strangers are coming. A lot of people will say to ourselves, well, what does that mean for everybody else who's not Israel? Okay? The strangers will be joining us in the land. And how is that going to go, brother? And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's what I just told that one person. I don't know who that brother is. I didn't get a chance to ask him. And I'm not going to speak falsely because I don't know. But whoever isn't Israel, your job is to cleave to the house of Israel. Okay, there's a scripture that says that if you find a man of wisdom, get yourself to his door and wear his door out. So if you see a man of the Lord and you're of another nation, cleave to that man who has wisdom. Okay, that's what you're being instructed to do. The other nations will cleave to the house of Jacob. And then what, brother? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Jehovah. Now that's the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. The land of the Most High is the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have our kingdom set up. And we're going to bring the other nations with them. And we're going to possess them. And I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to possess them in righteousness. I know a lot of brothers don't bring that up, but we are going to be righteous brothers in the kingdom of heaven. How that's going to look, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I know, but the word says what it says. The other nations are going to cleave to us, and we're going to possess them in the land of the Lord. For what, brother? For servants and handmaids, and they shall take the captives, whose captives they were. Now that's being made plain. We were captives in this land. We were brutalized, raped, and destroyed in this land. I don't know what judgment the Most High has for every single nation, but at the end of the day, you're going to cleave to the house of Israel. And you're going to be possessed by the house of Israel. And the house of Israel is going to rule over their oppressors. Okay, the Bible teaches us that when the righteous are in rule, the earth rejoices. But when the wicked bears rule, the earth mourns. So I'm not trying to make it sound like it's all gloom and doom because you have to cleave to the house of Israel. No, you're going to cleave to the most righteous people that the Most High himself chose. That's right. See, look at the beauty of that. Instead of being so hateful, instead of trying to tell God how he should do what he's doing, why don't you just get on board with the Most High and say, you know what? The Most High chose those people. I choose them too. How mighty is that? If I wake up and I find out that I'm not of the child of Israel, I'm not of the other nations, I'm still going to want the Most High's will to reign supreme. And I'm still going to humble myself enough to say, the Most High chose them, so I choose them. Anybody who's been chosen by the Most High God himself is a fine leader to me. Why can't the other nations do this? Why can't the other nations humble themselves and let them cleave to the house of Israel? Who's been chosen? We just read that in the book of Isaiah 49 and 6. I know we brought out a lot of points. And I did want to get to this last point for our brothers. Can we get back to Sirach 19 to 24, brothers? Hey, before I do that, did y'all have any questions? Man, there's so many things to get into. Did y'all have any questions before I move on to something else? It's okay. We'll get, we we going to be here, so we'll get y'all some. you are the biblical children of Israel That's right and as I say every Shabbat a responsibility comes with that a requirement comes of that the Most High God has a requirement of you children of Israel a lot of madness in the streets right now we're gonna get through it the word got to come out as I mentioned sundown brings in the day of Pentecost and we just read in the book of Acts chapter 2 where Peter was able to baptize 3,000 people. Okay, we have people who are walking to and fro. And I know some of these people have no idea that they're Israel. But we're going to get into something for the people who know that they're Israel. Because it's one thing to know that we're Israel, then what? Okay, knowing that we're Israel alone is not going to save us. We just mentioned that. Once we know that we're Israel, there's responsibilities and requirements of us. And we're going to get into some of those. Most high willing brothers get edified. 
Most High willing brothers have their hearts pricked, like we read in Acts 2. And most high willing, if it's needed, brothers repent. Because we are living in the last days, brothers and sisters. Now is the time to repent. Now is the time to worship the Most High God in spirit and in truth. So let me get to the book of Sirach 19 and 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 19. Salaki, so start from the top, brother. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 24. Yeah. He that has small understanding and feareth God is better than one that has much wisdom. Hold up. Hold up. I'm bringing this out because I hope it cuts a lot of us brothers who know that we're Israel. Whether you in a camp, whether you outside of a camp, whether you wearing fringes, whether you got a beard on your face, whether you eat pork or not, every single brother and sister of Israel needs to get this word. Okay? Because now that we've got wisdom, sometimes wisdom can make one puffed up. Okay? Sometimes wisdom can make us forget verses like this. Sirach 19 and 24 from the top again, brother. Verse 24. He that has small understanding and fears God is better than one that has much wisdom. Okay, I can't break that down, but it seems to be playing upon tables. There's a brother that could be walking up and down the street, and if he has a greater fear of the Most High God than you, it trumps out your wisdom. Okay, fear of the Most High God has been placed in precedence above your wisdom. The book teaches us that there is a man who is wise and teaches many, but to himself he's unprofitable. Okay, let's not forget scriptures like this. Wisdom alone doesn't save us. A man that has the fear of the Most High God is greater than he that has wisdom. What's your question, sister? The one we just read? Okay, I, I'll give you an example. I always bring this up. Um, the best parents usually have their children have a fear of them. And it's not a fear like you're going to kill your child. It's not a fear like you're going to abandon your child. It's a fear of reverence. Okay, you respect and you fear their judgment. Those are the type of people who tend to do what? They tend to do what their parents tell them to do. So this is why, matter of fact, let's get that in Proverbs 1 and 7. This scripture breaks it down beautifully about having a fear of God and why that's so important. Believe it or not, sister, this is the first and the most important thing you can do. That's right, I said it. More important than putting fringes on, more important than growing that beard, more important than dropping down the pork is this precept, Proverbs 1 and 7. Yep, Proverbs 1 and 7. Good question, sister. All right, you ready for this, sister? We're about to explain to you the importance of having a fear of the Most High God. Book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 7. Bring out. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Hold up. Hold up. That's why that fear of God is so important. Because that's the beginning of your knowledge. I'm going to tell you something, and it's gonna, I hope it makes it plain. This is why most people won't stop to hear this word. Because the fear of the God isn't in them. It just said that the fear of God is the beginning of your knowledge. So that means the first thing that you're going to do when you start attaining knowledge is have a fear of God. A fear of God makes a person stop. Like, like, honestly, we're going to get into that because we wanted to teach a lot of Israel. Believe it or not, even a lot of people who have great knowledge lose this. That's why we brought out Sirach 19 and 24 and we're going to get into this. Because it's been said that having a fear of God is greater than having great wisdom. Okay, so a lot of people don't learn because they either skip this step or they never fully got indulged in this step or God forbid, they once had a fear of God and then they lost it. Their knowledge maybe got them puffed up and now they're not walking around with a fear of the Most High God. But if you truly fear the Most High God, one of the things you're gonna do is fear his judgment. So guess what that's gonna look like? When a person comes up to men with the Bible in their hand, they're gonna do what you guys are doing. Listen, learn, take notes and try to get closer to the Most High God because you actually fear Him. Guess what a person who doesn't fear the Most High God is going to do? Ah, brother, let me tell you this, and you're not letting me talk, brother. You're not letting me talk. You want to talk more than God? That doesn't frighten you? It doesn't frighten you to open your mouth and tell people what they should do, and you tell the men with the Bible in their hand to be quiet while you tell them that. That would, that would make me, I'm afraid to do that. I'm afraid to do that. So that fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Finish that out, brother. 
but fools, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now that's beautiful. The fear of the Most High God is the beginning of your knowledge. But the ones who despise wisdom and instruction are fools. So when you guys come here and do what you're doing, the Most High sees you. That's really mighty that y'all were able to do that. Because of fear of God, matter of fact, let's get back into that. Sirach 19 to 24. You can... Ecclesiasticus or Sirach? Sirach is S-I-R-H. It's an apostle. Sirach 19 and 24. Thank you, sister. Yeah, definitely we want to be edifying. That's the most important part of why we're coming out here. But as I mentioned, this is to the 12 tribes, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We often come out into the streets and we teach those who don't know their Israel. And that's a mighty work. That's a mighty work to do that. But at the same time, we're also teaching those who know that they're Israel. Whether brothers are in camps, whether brothers just have the knowledge and the understanding, it's very important that we remember these and precepts like these in these last days. So Sirach 19 and 24. The book of Sirach chapter 19 and verse 24. Look it up. He that has small understanding and fear of God is better than one that hath wisdom, has much wisdom, and transgresseth the law of the most high. Now come. Now see that's being made that's being made plain. That someone who has a fear of the most high God is greater than he who has much wisdom but transgresses. And that's really something that's important for Israel to hear. Because as I mentioned, a lot of times in our wisdom, we can become puffed up. But if you don't have a fear of the Most High God, you're missing the main piece. You're missing not only the main thing that's greater than that wisdom, but you're missing the very first part, according to Proverbs 1 and 7. The thing that makes a person knowledgeable is the fact that they have a fear of the Most High God. I often bring this out because a lot of us, I'm just going to be honest with this. A lot of us think that we're not hypocrites because we have fridges on. And we tell a brother who doesn't have fringes on that he's out of order. A lot of us don't think that we're hypocrites because we got a beard on our face. And we tell somebody who doesn't have a beard on their face that you out of order. But how about how many of those people don't consider themselves hypocrites because they don't pay attention to those inward commandments? It's very easy to think that we're not hypocrites because we're keeping those commandments that every man and woman can see. But how about those commandments that every man and woman can't see? Can somebody let me get Matthew 12 and 36 and Matthew 12 and 37? That's right. First, brother, can you grab John 14 and 6? Because I want to make that point first. John 14 and 6. Hey, sister, and I'm going to give you a flyer. We put these videos out every single week. So we not only teach you with other videos we have, you can go back and watch everything that you're seeing us go over today. So if you do want to take notes and put down some scriptures that we're going over, we can give you a flyer and you can watch the videos later. Absolutely. Let me get what you have first, brother, in John 14 and 6. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Yahweh Shah said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is Yahweh Shah? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father but by what? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I hope that's being made plain. You will never go wrong following Yahweh Shah. You will never go wrong modeling your life, your ministry, your speech after Yahweh Shah. Because no one goes to the Father except by him. So we're going to get some very important words from Yahweh Shah. Matthew 12 and 36, brother. This is for Israel. Book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, a lot of brothers know these scriptures. As I mentioned, a lot of times we're teaching brothers that have the knowledge. It's one thing to teach a sheep that doesn't have the knowledge, but some of us in Israel who have the knowledge need that we be taught again. The first principles, okay? So this is Yahweh who is the way, the truth, and the life, who no one goes to the Father except by him, telling us what, brother? One more time. Uh -huh. Verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 37, bro. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now, I don't even have to break that down and make that plain. The judge himself, that, that's literally like the judge coming up to you like, hey, this is, what, this is how you're going to be judged. This is how you're going to be condemned. 
okay, you can not you can be a hypocrite by not honoring that scripture. Long story short, even in Israel, we have to learn to watch our mouth. Even in Israel, we have to learn to be mindful of the words that we say. You can be a hypocrite by not watching your mouth. It's not enough to have fringes on. It's not enough to have that beard on your face. These are the commandments that men can see. What about those commandments men can't see? Let me get Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Because we just brought this out for a sheep, for a brother. And brothers love to bring this out. But it's one thing to bring it out, and it's another thing to act like it applies to you as well. If you don't do that, then you yourself are a hypocrite. Being a hypocrite isn't just you keeping the carnal commandments and letting men see that you do it. But what about these commandments here? That is a commandment from our Lord and Savior himself. That by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So when you go off on somebody with your words, the Most High is watching that. By Hashem Yahweh And you are being judged and condemned by that. Don't be that brother that's giving somebody the word, the knowledge, the understanding, which all praises to that. All praises for those who give the word, the knowledge, the understanding. But if you yourself aren't honoring that scripture, then you would be a hypocrite. You can be a hypocrite in your fringes, with your beard on your face. Okay, when Yahweh was here, let's just keep it real. He wasn't here admonishing those who were not keeping the corner commandments. Every time he got on a brother, it was about those inward commandments. It was about what was, the, what was in the inward man. And a lot of us brothers, that's a, that seems to be a stumbling block for us. And we need to make sure that that's not the case. Even myself, I hope brothers don't think that I'm so righteous and exalting myself that I would act like these words don't apply to me. They, matter of fact, I made sure that they apply to me first. I get people on the comment section asking me like, brother, why do you not talk like that? Or why do you not scream like this? You need to, because I treat it like the Most High God is watching me right now. Do you understand that? Okay, that's why I said bring that out, brother, one more time. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. Get out. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. That means Israelites too. Spoiler alert. That means Israelites too. That we too have to keep our foot when we go into the house of the Most High God. Okay, if you want to know why some sheep maybe resist you, because maybe you offended a brother. You offended somebody with your personality. Maybe you didn't offend them with the word, but if your first action was to speak vile words to them, was to speak what uh, Sirach calls opprobrious words, okay, offensive words, and then when the brother takes offense to it, you give them more offensive words and say, oh, brother, you just effeminate, you just soft. Okay, is it the word that's offending that brother or is it your personality? You've let your personality overtake the word of the Most High God. Watch your mouth, watch your spirit. A man that has control over his spirit is mightier than a city. Be that type of man, be that type of example because we can be hypocrites in way more ways than the carnal commandments that we keep. You can be a hypocrite because you call a brother an offensive word. He tells you you offended me and you offend him again with another offensive word. You are a hypocrite. With your fringes on, with your beard on your face. Continue that, brother. And be more, more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. Okay, in these last days, this is important. Yahweh is not playing with us. He said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes unto the Father except by him. I recommend that brothers take that to heart. You go into the book of Matthew, you go into Luke, you go into John, and if you need to, read all the red letters. That's what I, That's a task that I gave all my brothers in this group right here. Okay, in these last days, we need to understand that Yahweh Shai is not playing with us. We are going to be judged or condemned based on the words that come out of our mouth. It's not a light thing. So let's just take these words as if they mean something. Because it's not what goes out of the mouth that defiles Salakia. It's not what comes into the mouth that defiles a man. It's what goes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Let's not forget and let's not overlook these mighty lessons that Yahweh Shah was teaching us. Because we want to get on a brother so bad and call brothers every name in the book and wonder why we offended them. Okay, would we have received the truth like that? Okay, Yahweh Shah also told you to treat your brother in the same way that you want to be treated. Let's say if you was in the middle of your sin 
and a brother told you something like, look at you, brother, you wicked, you going to hell, you gonna walk away from that brother as well. And notice what you're doing. You're not speaking the words of the Most High God. That was your personality doing that. So if you're going to offend a brother, you better make sure you offend him, thus said the Most High. Because you should be afraid to offend him based off of your own understanding and letting your own spirit rule over the word. I hope brothers are able to be admonished by that. What you have? Oh, one, one, one more scripture, sister. We're going to bring this one out, then I'm going to get straight to you. Bless each other, Father, verse 2. No. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou art upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Kind. Now, that's a mighty scripture. So, a lot of brother for bringing that out. Because these scriptures are important. Okay? We're living in the day of Pentecost. We're about to come into Pentecost right now. Okay? And now is the time that the harvest is being made. The first fruits to Yahweh are being made. Okay, so make your calling and election sure. If you want to make your calling and election sure, then you need to model yourself after the Most High God. That's the way that in that day we may have great boldness. That we know that in the same way he was, is the same way that we were. So I hope brothers are able to receive this love. Because in these last days when those first fruits are being given, make sure you yourself are counted worthy. Okay, somebody let me get Galatians 1 and 10. Water, brother, what we got? Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. For do I not, Salah, for do I now persuade men or Yahweh? Do I now persuade men or do I persuade God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not, I should not be the servant of Yahweh Shamashiach. Now, every single brother should understand that scripture and take that to heart. Okay, we're not out here to please men. I know a lot of times a brother can end up developing another brother's personality because he's trying to please that brother. And your, your desire to please another man is making you go off. Okay, we don't seek to please the men and I hope no brother seeks to please me. We're here to seek and please Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's being made plain. So be weary and be careful of developing the personality of a brother because you're trying to please him. If you're going to develop a personality, if you're going to please someone, then you need to be pleasing and developing the personality of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's being made plain. Somebody let me get the book of Colossians chapter 3 and 12. How y'all brothers doing? Y'all brothers got any questions about anything? Y'all stick around, all right? We're not only gonna bring out some good word, we're gonna actually have some food available for brothers. Okay, because at sundown, Pentecost starts. So we got a couple of, I'm not gonna lie, we got some turkey sandwiches, some drinks, some snacks, some chips. If y'all brothers sit down and enjoy the word, we'd love to fellowship with you brothers. All right, come. Let me get uh, Colossians 3 and 12, brother. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Read it out. Put on therefore as the elect of your hope. Who are we talking to? Now, as I mentioned, we often come out here and speak to the people who don't know they're Israel. These brothers are a prime example. A lot of us at this time, we know we're Israel. We understand the truth. Okay, but knowledge is not enough. You can be the wisest brother in Israel and yet still be unprofitable to yourself. Let's finish that. Colossians 3 and 12. We're going to go into some of the things that the elect of God are going to look like. Let's get that, brother. Holy and beloved, vows of mercy. Vows of what, brother? Vows of mercy. No vows of judgment. Vows of mercy. No vows of getting on the other nation. Vows of mercy. Vows of getting on the other nations, but not myself. Vows of mercy. Vows of not understanding that we were the one who transgressed. Vows. The nations are the are the most high sword. Brothers know these precepts. I'm not teaching brothers anything different. We know that the wicked is the most high sword. Okay, the most high is looking for us to understand that we have sinned, that our forefathers have sinned. So how dare you go off and get on the other nations, which is, I explained this in a parable. It's like your dad about to give you that ass whooping. Okay, and once he start beating you, you look and start yelling at the belt. 
Are you kidding me? All right. Yeah, that was the weapon of your of your beating. But what do you think your father wants you to do? What do you think he wants you to acknowledge? The belt or your own sins? Okay, so no brother should be out here doing that more than you acknowledge the sins of us and the sins of our people. These are the last days, brothers and sisters. We don't have that much longer to get this right. So get it right now while we can. Continue that out, brother. They said the, the elect of God are going to have vows of mercy. And what else, brother? Vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind. Now, how many people even use those words? How many people even use words like, I'm trying to be the kindest man in Israel? I'm trying to be the most humble man in Israel. I'm trying to be the man in Israel that shows the most vows of mercy because this just said that this is what the elect of God look like. And I want myself to be of that number. I want to be of that number of the elect. Right. This is plainly telling you how you get there. And it didn't say you get there by making sure you tell the other nations all the things that they've done, but you don't notice any of the things that we've done. Okay, your father, just like somebody who beat you, wants you to understand your don't your wrongdoing. Way more than the weapon that he used to beat you with is to understand why you got beat in the first place. Is where we cannot, we cannot do that thing less than we do the, the other. Okay, we have to make sure that we are complete. Being perfect means to be complete. We have to make sure that we understand that part. Hey, let me give y'all some brother something before y'all. Right there. Get all the videos. Right. Yeah. Get most high one of you, brother. Stop. Absolutely. Get most high bless you, brother. Two. Where we at, brother? All right, let's get that. Hominess of mind, meekness, long suffering. Hold up. We just heard words like meekness and long suffering. Okay, we all know that Moses was considered what? One of the most meekest men on the earth. Yahweh Shah himself said, follow my example because I am meek and lowly at heart. So that's giving you something else about your personality or the personality you should have. I don't have a meek personality if 90 or 80 or 70% of my ministry is how I'm gonna have my feet propped up on the other nations. Okay, to be meek and to be lowly at heart is to think low of yourself. And I'll be honest with you, if we really pay attention to the sins of ourselves and our forefathers, we don't have any right to be walking around here puffed up. We don't have any right to be walking around here with our chest out. We should be the most meekest people on the earth because we understood that it was us that transgressed the Most High God. Brothers love to bring out that the Most High God chose us to give us his laws and his statutes and commandments. That means that we should look at ourselves with that much more criticism because we're the ones who broke them. The other nations weren't given these laws. We were near and dear to the Most High God and we forsook him. Okay, I don't know if brothers know this or not, but there's enough pride in Israel. Pride is not the issue in Israel. I don't need to tell people how wonderful you are on earth What's missing in Israel is humility. The humility needs to increase in Israel. Continue what you got, brother. Uh, forbear, verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Uh, and above all these things, put on charity. Put on what, brother? Put on charity. Okay, you just said of all these things put on charity. So what is charity? Somebody let me get 1 Corinthians 13. We just read these scriptures about what the elect of God are going to be doing. We read things like bowels of mercy. We read things like meekness. We read things like being humble. Okay, these are personality traits, Israel, that we have to have. We who are trying to make ourselves our calling and election sure need to make sure that we're putting on those characteristics. Those were the characteristics of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Right. Those are what we were being told to do. Did somebody have that? Did I have you with that, brother? Uh, first Corinthians 13. Because he said, above all these traits are charity. Okay, one of the best personality traits that we can have is charity. Let's get into that. First Corinthians chapter 13. I think we can start at, let's start at 2, bro. Book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 2. Read it out. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Hold up. 
if this is going to just what we brought out into what we brought up in Sirach 19 and 24. He said, even though I have the gift of prophecy, and this is Paul speaking, okay, he's he's wiser surely than anybody in Israel today. I, I can't say that. Let me not say that. But Paul was not known for being ignorant, is what I'm saying. And this is what he's going to tell you. Start from the top, brother. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and I have not charity, I am nothing. Hold up, brother. And you have not what you are. And just start. If you don't have what you are nothing. What is that? Have not charity. I am nothing. Now, I hope that's being made plain. Okay, the knowledge of prophecy, your wisdom, all the breakdowns that you can do. If you have charity, you have nothing. And let's get a little bit more into what charity is. Continue, brother. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. I hope this is being made clear. Continue, brother. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Chari char charity sucketh. Wanteth not itself. Charity does not. What to itself, brother? Not. Charity vaunted not itself is not puffed up. Now see those, look at these qualities, brothers. Listen to what we're hearing about charity. Charity does not vaunt itself. Charity is not puffed up. Okay, so you trying to pout on your chest about how you might be the mightiest man of Israel or teaching others that. Okay, doesn't mean that you have charity. Okay, charity is not puffed up. Charity does not vaunt it itself. If we are out here doing this work, it is not because of our own doing. It is only because of the grace of the Most High God that we are even able to stand out here today. Every single Israelite brother and sister should feel that way. There was nothing that we did to receive the gift of being able to receive the truth. So there's no reason for Israel to be out here puffed up. There's no reason to tell a brother that you're Israel, so that means that you're gonna be able to do everything better than everybody else. Okay, what profit is that if a man does not have charity? Let's get better into charity, brother. Verse 5, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh not no evil. Huh. Like, listen to these qualities. I know brothers know these scriptures, especially brothers in Israel, or some brothers who know that they're Israel. Okay, we're reading all the qualities of having charity. Continue, brother. Rejoices not in the iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all, all things, hopeth all things endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Absolutely. And that's what all of us should be doing. If we consider ourselves... If we consider ourselves no longer babes in this truth, or even if we do. Okay, this said that when I was a child, I thought as a child, and I acted as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So if you're putting away childish things, guess what you're putting on? Charity. You're going to embody these things that we're mentioning right now. That's what it means about putting away your childish ways and becoming a man. Okay, this said that a man is not easily provoked. So that means, there's another scripture that says, do not give railing for railing. Okay, so we don't, we're not going to be those brothers who if a brother comes up here and screams at us, we scream back at the brother. And say, well, I had to give that to the brother because he gave it to me. Okay, those would be showing that we've put off our childish ways. This just said that a, a person that has charity does not only not vaunt itself, but it's not easily provoked. Those are going to be the personality traits that we in Israel, the elect of God, are looking to embody. Finish that out, brother. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then a face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity greatest of these is what bro but the greatest of these is charity Come. Huh. all right i just wanted to put this message out because that's been on my spirit and there's no way that i'm going to seek to please man more than i seek to please the most high god 
we've been given the blueprint. Okay, it said that Yahweh Shah came and gave us a more sure word of prophecy. Meaning you ain't gonna get a better word than the word that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach put into us. As we keep mentioning, he said that he was the only way to the Father. So every single brother should have it put on their heart to go and read those red letters and making sure that you're not in transgression. Making sure you're not one of those hypocrites that he was speaking on. Because he wasn't telling those men that they were hypocrites because of the carnal commandments that they were keeping. But it was because of those inward commandments that they were overlooking. In these last days, we have to make sure that we are right with God and that we make our calling and election short. All praise to the Most High. I know somebody said they had questions. Did y'all still have any questions y'all wanted to go over? I know I went over that a little. Matter of fact, let me get back into 2 Peter chapter 1. I found something beautiful in there as well. I think we might want to start at, um, we might can start down to verse 1, man, because I read that whole chapter and it was good. 2 Peter chapter 1. Yeah. Let's start at four, brother. Second Peter chapter one and four. To a lot of the things we just went over about who the elect of God should be striving to be. Okay, how we should be purging out the sins of ourselves in these last days, how we should be making our calling and election sure. These are the things we have to get to, Israel. These are the things that we ought to do and not leave undone. Second Peter one and start at four, brother. I mean three. I'm not four. four. Book of Second Peter, chapter one and verse four. Right now whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and, by, and, by, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Add to our faith what, brother? Virtue. It's a virtue, knowledge. I don't know if brothers know what virtue mean. I had to look that word up when I read it, and it said of high moral quality. Okay, so it says, add to your faith virtue. It means that your morals should go up. No brother should look at you and be like, that brother's acting immoral. Okay, that brother's out of his spirit. That brother's out of his body. We have to add to our faith virtue. And what else, brother? Into, into knowledge, temperance. Into knowledge, temperance. Okay, so if you have a bunch of knowledge, if you're one of the wisest men in Israel, great. But as your knowledge increases, make sure your temperance increases. What is temperance? It means that's your ability to not lead with your emotions. That's your ability to not be easily provoked. Temperance means that you're able to control your temper. Or some people can't help but getting mad and, and, and reacting off of their own feelings and own personality. We should add to our knowledge temperance so that doesn't become us. Okay, continue that, brother. Into temperance, patience. Into temperance what, brother? Patience. That means that even that brother that don't get it, we just had an example of that with a brother here. Okay, that brother required a lot of patience, right? Let's be honest. But after a while, that brother sat down. All praises to the Most High. That's right. No, he took his admonishment and Most High willing, he was able to receive something even if it was nothing about but the pork and understanding that he was in error about that understanding. But that's one of the bowels, of, that's one of those characteristics that the elect of God are looking to add to their, to their armor in these days. Okay, that we also add to ourselves patience. Let's have patience with our brothers and sisters. And what else, brother? Into patience, godliness. Into godliness, brotherly kindness. Into brotherly, into brotherly kindness, charity. Hold up, brother. Because we just did a whole soliloquy on charity. And now we have Peter. We love to say that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is confirmed. So we didn't got that confirmed by Paul. We're getting that confirmed by Peter. He said that the... Read that one thing again, brother. What do, what do we need to focus on? One of the main things we need to focus on? Huh. Verse 7, into godliness, brotherly kindness, into brotherly kindness, charity. Charity. Okay, we just went over that. First Corinthians 13, if you want to go and get it into it again, but continue what you got, brother. Verse 8, for if these things be in you and abound, they make, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. And that's so important. If these things be in you, they make you to where you should not be barren and unprofitable. Meaning that if you just have these fruits, you're going to be profitable. You yourself are going to produce good fruit because you are a good fruit. That's what that's telling you. Okay, continue, brother. Verse 9. 
But he that lacketh these things is blind. Hold up. This is important. Because we got Peter and Paul telling you that knowledge, even with knowledge, you know you're Israel. Okay. You better make sure that you make yourself, your, your election sure. By developing these personality traits. Because this is saying that even if you have that knowledge, if you don't have these qualities, you're still blind. Okay, continue that out, brother. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Wherefore the, ra wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election ass assured. And that's what I just brought up. Okay, Paul just went into that beautifully. We went into Colossians. We went into 1 Corinthians 13, and here we are in 2 Peter. Okay, if you want to make your calling and election sure, these are the characteristics and traits you're going to be putting on. Okay, these are not only to be the things that you're instilling in your own personality, but when you teach the sheep, instill it in them. Instill these same personality traits in them. As I mentioned, there's enough pride in Israel. What we don't have is a lot of these qualities that we're going over right now. Continue what you got, brother. But if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shammashiach, verse 12. Wherefore, I would not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yes, I think it meet, I think it meet, as long as I am in, in this tabernacle, disturb you by putting you in remembrance. That's all I'm trying to do, brothers and sisters. This is all love. And I hope you can see that, that I love my people. I really want us to come to these qualities. Okay, especially us who are learned men. Us learned men have to teach the sheep in these ways as well. So that we ourselves being a good fruit, also bear good fruit. Because let's make this plain. We all know that it's real easy for Israel to click on a video because they can see the drama based on the thumbnail. They can see you kicking Esau in the butt in the thumbnail. Brother's like, oh, I'm gonna click on that. Or they can see you say Wicked Eve got her breast out. Oh, I'm gonna click on that. Okay, but how many people are trying to make sure that they're doing things that are pleasing to the Most High God? It's one thing to be trying to please men and get the attention of men. Okay, but it's another thing to be trying to please the Most High God and get His attention. Whether 6,000 or 20,000 people watch your video or whether 20 people watch your video, you should be doing that video as if the Most High is watching. As if you're doing that video in the name of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. That's the ultimate judge. That's the ultimate critic. What Make your video, make your ministry as if the Most High God is in the midst of you, like brothers love to bring out. Where, he, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. Let's treat it like that. Okay, if you wouldn't say some of this stuff you say, or do some of this stuff you do, with your Hawashai right next to your shoulder, then don't do it when you think he's not. That's what that's saying. Continue that out, brother. I think we're about to finish it out. Verse 14. Knowing that shortly, I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord, Yahawashah Mashiach, has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that he may, may be able after these that you may be able after these deceits to have these things always in remembrance. Verse 16. But we have not followed cunningly the vast faith fables when, when we may know unto you the power and coming unto our Lord Yahweh Shabashiach, but were our witnesses of his majesty. Now we're going to end that right there. But what Peter's basically saying is we actually walked with the Messiah. We walked with Yahweh Shah himself. That's why he said that they have a sure form of prophecy. How much sure form of prophecy can you get than somebody who walked with Yahweh Shai himself? Yahweh Shai told you, I tell you now, that there are many great prophets and men who wish that they could have seen the things you've seen and heard the things that you've heard. Some of our forefathers, they heard the word, but the word made flesh didn't walk with them. Okay, that's a more sure form of prophecy. How dare brothers ignore that? Okay, we only get into the kingdom of heaven by one way. There's only one door. If a man try to enter into the door any other way, he is a robber. Okay, so brothers need to really hearken into these words. And if some of these words prick your heart, let's go back to Acts 2 and 37. 
because we're approaching Pentecost right now. If these words prick your heart, all praises to the Most High God, this is what it did to those 3,000 men on the day of Pentecost. So we are rehearsing the righteous acts of our forefathers here in 2024. Acts, let's start at verse 2 and 37, brother. Look at Acts, chapter 2 and verse 37. Yeah. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. I hope brothers heard this and were pricked in their heart. I love you, my brothers. I love you, my sisters. And if these be the last days, I hope that all of us can make our call and an election short. I hope all of us can put on these characteristics and qualities that makes us be bold in the day of judgment that we would be considered the elect of God. Okay, I hope that we're all able to come to that. But continue that out, brother. And say unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahweh Shalmashiach for the remission of sins. As I mentioned, a brother's never too late to repent. Okay, you don't repent one time like being baptized in water. You get dipped in the water and now all of a sudden you think you're good for life. No, you should die daily. Every single day you should be killing off a piece of that old man. So if you're an Israelite, every single person, even today, can repent. Even if you repent it 10,000 times, today is another good day to repent. Today is another good day to have these words prick your heart and say, you know what? That brother brought out characteristics that I'm not, I don't have. I just gotta be honest with myself. He talked about things like having bowels of mercy, things like being slow to anger, meek. If I don't have those qualities, then I myself could be blind. And in these last days, when the first fruits are being gathered, I don't wanna be caught off guard. I don't wanna be caught unawares. So most high willing brothers are pricked by these words. Continue what you got, brother. Right. For the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as our Lord, as our Lord, our God, shall call. And with many other words, do ye testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this uh, untoward generation. I brought that out early. Okay, this said that with many words he exhorted the people. And most high willing, that was something that we brothers were able to do up here today. Okay, we're here to exhort our people. We're here to admonish our people. We're here to build up our people. So most high willing, that was something that the brothers were able to do today. Absolutely. Let me know if you guys got any questions, but even if you don't, we put these videos on YouTube. So you guys can come and get any questions answered, any things that you might have as well. Finish that out. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. Hold on. Can I ask you guys a question? Have you ever been baptized? How did you get baptized? Okay. Start at verse 40. I want you to hear this verse then. It's that, I want you to know that the Most High God controls our steps. So us brothers just happen to be bringing up what it means to be baptized and you walk by. That's right. So I want you to hear this scriptures, Acts 2 and verse 40. Look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 40. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word. Were, they that gladly received this word were what? Were baptized. Hold up, those that were dipped in water, right? Were baptized. Hold up, those who went to church, right? Were baptized. And the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now see, this is mighty. This is the spirit. Because this is literally going into an account on the day of Pentecost. Did you know that today is just becoming the day of Pentecost? As the sun goes down, Pentecost is happening. And it said that that day, 3,000 people were baptized when they heard this word. So when you're being born again, it doesn't mean that you get washed off in water and it takes away dirt off your flesh. Born again is to have a renewal of your mind. I brought this point out last week that what makes more sense that a person born again becomes like a child meaning that you have a renewing of your mind or that you got dipped in that water okay it's come it, it's evident that being dipped in water doesn't make one a new person i brought up something that happened to me when i was a kid and people laughed but we used to have a bus that came and picked up all the kids in the hood and took us to longview baptist church and any kid that got baptized they gave them like a whole lunch bag full of money I've been baptized like 40, 50 times. Like, because every time they picked me up, I would go and I would be like, yep, I need to be dipped in water. And it was only so I could get candy. 
This just made it plain that it's the word that baptizes us. The book of Ephesians 5 and 26 says that they must be baptized by the washing of the water by the word. So many times people say that I've been dipped in water. My first advice is I hope you dip yourself in this word. This is what baptizes us. And even on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago, it said that when the people heard this word, they were baptized. So most high will is if you could just have a change of mind, you would be baptized. But not baptized in water as of that that puts off the dirt from the flesh, but baptized with the renewing of your mind. That's right. Absolutely. Did you get one of those flying, sister? I did not, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Because Check on you. Had to make sure you went to the to no lie. Absolutely. Sister, you're going to be on YouTube. <laughs> so, so make sure you watch that video. We did a good breakdown here. Most high willing, you're able to receive the increase, you and your family. All right, y'all have a good day. Most high bless you. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. We're here to baptize our people by the washing of the water of the word. Hey, since everybody's here, um, I'm gonna go and get that food, man. Do brothers wanna go and do that right now? I do want to feed these people that's been here waiting for us. Hey, we got one more scripture we're going to bring out. As we mentioned, sundown starts Pentecost, okay? That was a feast for our people. So many people were baptized by the word, but they also broke bread and had fellowship with each other. So most high willing, if y'all stick around, we'll bring some a few things that we brought out, and then we can go ahead and eat and drink with brothers. And if anybody got any questions, we can go over those as well. Most high will. All right, let's see what you got, brother. Uh -huh. Book of Second John. So like, Book of Second John, chapter one, and verse nine. Bring it out. Whosoever transgresseth and abided not in the doctrine of Yahweh had not God. That's beautiful, brother. Because that's all we're trying to get our brothers and sisters to do. Okay, it's all love up here. We just want us to make sure that Yahweh is the door. Right. Yahweh is the way, the truth, and the life. And none of us are going to the Father except by Him. And that no man is going to get in that door any other way. So if you're going to liken your personality, your characteristics to anybody, don't do them to any brother or person that you see in the street. That includes me. If you're going to model yourself after anybody, it should be that of Yahweh Shah. All right, continue that out, brother. Mighty point. Uh, he that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had, he had both the Father and the Son. And there come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your house. Neither bid him God's speed. For he that for he that bid him God's speed is part is partake so like, is partaker in his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink. But I trust to so like, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect. Sister, greet thee. Amen. Amen. All praise to the Most High God. As I mentioned, we're going to get some stuff. Most High willing brothers and sisters stick around. And then we'll still be here to answer more questions and exhort our brothers further. Ask you how we eat what I pray. Because I know I can die any day. Teach you how we just show me the way. Turn the water down the path that you lay.